The dogs have a new coordinator. Mike, I said, keep your hands off my monkin. Right. It didn't happen. The Ravens get their guy. And it is big news today as we get started. We will certainly talk about the debacle that the Hawks were last night. It's why they're not going anywhere. But we'll get to that. Mike, this whole thing with Todd Monken, and we just heard Randy McMichael say, he, it, it's a big deal, it's not the biggest deal. I think it's the biggest deal. Mike, you're, you're losing a coordinator who arguably over the last few seasons was the best play caller in college football. I know we're familiar with Mike Bobo. Right. But that doesn't mean that Mike Bobo's the right hire. I know that Kirby is familiar with Mike Bobo. It doesn't mean that Mike Bobo's the, the right hire. Mike, you remember when we went through this with the Falcons? And Dan Quinn was like, yeah, we're just going to bring in a guy to call Shanahan's plays. Right. I don't know if Mike Bobo is going to try to do the same things that Todd yeah, Munkin did. But, I mean, you know. But, but, let me finish. But, the deal for me is, I think Bobo is a guy that's known and feels comfortable to Kirby. And so most dog fans feel like, all right, it's the best thing. I don't know that, Mike. I'm not going to say that it is. I'm sorry to cut you off. This is not Dirk Cutter 2.0. This is not Dirk Cutter 2.0. I think you go back, and I think I've looked – I look back at some of the things that I tweeted about, and I look back at the stats this morning because we were talking about, you know, the Bobo hire. I think, you know, when you look at a coordinator – Every single game, and that's your team. You're always going to have a beef. That's you know, you're always close to it, and you belly. Well, he should have run here, and why did why did he do this on third down in the red zone? I think when you look at it, Georgia under Mark Richt was Auburn under Gene Chizik. Mm. There was less margin for error because the team wasn't as good and wasn't as well built. And I'm just going to use that as a, as a starting off point. I think this time you've got a defense which is lights out. The recruiting is better. Hell, they spend more than anybody on recruiting. The facilities are better. And if you go back, for instance, 2012, Bobo's best offense. That was a thousand yard year for Todd Gurley. That was 36 touchdowns for Aaron Murray. That defense gave up 350 yards rushing to Alabama and was bad. Was averaging you know, 189 yards a game in rushing allowed. I just think under this this set of circumstances, Georgia is on a much better place. So yeah, if Bobo does something that bothers you, then it won't be as much pressure on the offense to put up 40 this time. But he did have a good offense. I just think we become. Because everything was on a razor's edge with Mark Richt, it made Bobo's mistakes that much bigger magnified. Okay, that's fair. How's that sound? So what you're telling me, this is more of a function of our dislike for Bobo and his play calling. It's a function more of Mark Richt than it is right. the actual coach who was calling the plays and making things happen. Listen, Connor Riley said this, and he's going to join us at 4 o'clock, that when Bobo was here over the course of years that he was calling the plays, this team was averaging a lot of points. Mm. They just weren't winning chips. Right. So, again, every time you're coming up short, we're always looking for somebody to blame. The only thing I'm saying about this mm. is it's always easy to hire somebody in the building because it's easy. It doesn't mean it's the right hire. And that's all mm. I'm going to say. If if the dogs don't win a chip, but let's just say, Mike, next season, they're doing dog things offensively and they're averaging 48 a game. Right. That's not Mike Bobo's fault. That's, that's not the offense. If there's a drop in production, if the quarterback play is not as good, and I know you're losing Stetson Bennett, who's been there, but the fact is, one thing that Munkin did is he made he made uh, Stetson Bennett better. I need to see Todd Bobo make these guys better. And I know some guys have played for him. You mentioned, you know, guys in the past that had great careers. I just don't know if you slide somebody in, and this is the point I was making earlier. It wasn't it was, – I wasn't thinking about uh, uh, who came in here. Um – Janie? No, no, no. For the Falcons, we were talking oh, about. Oh, uh, Dirk Cutter. Uh, Kurt Cutter. I was thinking about uh, the guy that came before him that oh, came in. Oh, they brought Sarkeesian in. Sarkeesian. And he never run a Shanahan about. offense. And, and it was just like, oh, well, the offense is so good, we can yeah. just throw anybody yeah. in there. The same thing applies in college, guys. Mm. I know we feel like Georgia's rolling, and they are. This is a big deal. Right. And look, and you said it. I know that uh, you know some Alabama fans, they're not as compelled by the Kevin Steele hire, you know, and uh, I just think you, you can look at the program and say this time everything is better, it's bigger. When out when Georgia was under Mark Rick, not a knock on Rick, just the way it was, you had like a five to one chance to win the East. You weren't as, you know, you you struggled at times in Tennessee, you lost games you weren't supposed to. Kirby teams don't lose games they're not supposed to. And I just felt this time around, I think Bobo a little bit wiser. I would and, agree. I would agree. And, 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 I, and I think, but the only thing is the baseline was Stetson Bennett. We don't, we've never seen Carson Beck in these situations. We've never seen Brock Vandegrift in these situations. So, but he did do a great job with Matthew Stafford, did a great job with Aaron Murray. Murray was great. So I think, you know, there's some history there too. 
What do you guys think? 404-741-0929. Do you get what Mike's saying about Bobo and the dislike or the, the way that we feel kind of unfair is what he's telling you. He because said, Georgia wasn't – Kirby has turned it into his version of Alabama. It's Georgia, obviously, but it's run like a Saban thing. Mark Rick's teams were never run that way. There was always stupid special teams mistakes, dumb, undisciplined penalties. All that stuff came part and parcel with those Mark Rick years, and Bobo, I think, maybe bears the brunt of some of that. That's just when I look back at it. And that's, that's, I think it's a perfect point. I really do. And I think that's why some of you feel the way you do when you heard today, not Bobo again. <laughs> I, know. I don't want Bobo. Here's what I'm going to tell you, just like I do with all these coaches. When Coach Art got the job, mm-hmm. right? When LP got the job, when Nate took the job, it doesn't matter. Pick your sport. I'm going to give him a shot. We got to give him a chance to see how this looks, what's going to happen, and if the the thing, Mike, about this is, if the Georgia offense again, if there's fall off, and I mean that only from a, a point production standpoint, guys, if they get back to the SEC championship game, everybody's doing their job, right? At the end of the day, that's it, that's how it that's what it's going to come down to. But the reason why you believe Georgia could win a national championship the last two years, and the biggest thing I doubted the last two years was were they going to have the offense to do it. We are in a college era that you have to score a lot of points, okay? Ohio State does it. Alabama does it. Georgia does it. Talk about the teams. Hell, TCU did it until they met Georgia right. in, the, in the finals. So this is where we are. You have to have an offense that is stout, consistent, and scoring a lot of points. And that was the only thing. They answered that question. Will they answer yeah. it with Mike Bobo? But, yeah, as, as we said, you know, he, he was a guy that put up 40, you know, at teams average 40 points. That 2012, I went back, I looked at all the numbers from 2012, and that's where the defense, guys, Todd Grantham's, we said to start the segment, Todd Grantham's defense let Alabama run for 350 yards. A.J. McCarron only threw for less, like, under, under 200 yards in that game. Because your defense was just so one-dimensional. And I just think they're better. Must champ in the staff. They're be- they've got a better staff. Everything is, I, I, I hate to repeat myself, Carl, everything is better. <laughs> everything is more in place to make this run. But I get it. Because people looked at Bobo, and I think you, you looked at all those things I mentioned that used to happen. Mark Rick team, we're, we're good almost every other year to lose one or two games. They should, no business losing. Look at the South Carolina That's games. Right. Always be some stupid special team screw up. And Spurrier would score 14 points and beat him in Athens. Things like that. That doesn't happen on Kirby's watch. So the way that you're stating it, though, and I do agree with you about your point about why we feel the way we do about Bobo, mm-hmm. but the way you're stating it is that you can put anybody in there because things are so much better <laughs> all the way around that you can just throw anybody in there. Dukes and Bell are out. Just put another show in. I don't know if that works, Mike. Well, I, he, I, that's all he, I'm saying. But he is a – statistically, he, if you look at, the num- look at the numbers, he was always one or two in the SEC, sometimes one or two in the nation offensively, and now you've got better pieces. Now it's even better. You know, because in the old days, you know, you had, no, you had Matthew and you had no Sean Moreno. We talked about it, the Todd Gurley. The 2012 team, that was, the, that was Mark Rick's best chance to win a championship, and the defense let him down. It wasn't Mike Bobo. All right, guys. <clears throat> what do you think? 404-741-0929. Hit us up on our Solomon Brothers Diamond text line as we talk about this today. Transition. Listen, Kirby got this right with the last guy. And he may get it right with this hire, right? With the guy that's in the building, he trusts, he knows. All I know is Nick Saban's gotten it right a whole lot. Every time somebody's left, he's been like, no problem. Let's keep moving. Let's keep grinding. We'll find our way back to a championship. And they have. And so for me, this is a big deal only because you're on top. And if there's any slippage or fall off, Mike, who do you think's gonna gonna be oh, yeah. the guy that they point the finger? Oh, at? totally. I mean, you know where this is going. The, the thing is, because he is part of that. That's why you know you have guys getting upset about Stacy Searles being hired. That goes back to the Mark Richter era. I think you got to guys. You got a better built machine, and you got to get over your Rick angst, okay? Because <laughs> that's what this is. This is more about Mike, Mark Rick than it is Mike Bubble in my mind. You like I said, Duke some bell out and throw yeah. somebody else in there. But well, like, you can't. You can't do that. That's why I threw it out there.